the United States wants a strong Europe, and we want Poland to be influential in that strong Europe. Hello, I'm Emily Tampkin. I'm the U.S. editor at The New Statesman, and today it is my great pleasure and honor to be joined by Ambassador uh, Dan Freed. He is a veteran diplomat and is now at the Atlantic Council, a think tank in Washington, D.C. Ambassador, thank you for, for being with me today. Thank you for having me. I wanted to speak today about the United States and Poland, which I know is a subject about which you are, are very passionate. Um, I guess to begin, if we could speak a bit about why current developments in Poland are so important. So Poland's courts decided that national law would take precedence over EU law. Why, why is that, you know, for people who, who don't follow this as closely, why is that significant? Well, we'll see how significant it is. Poland, the government in Warsaw has been fighting or squabbling with the EU for a number of years. And what, why is this important to the United States? The United States wants a strong Europe and we want Poland to be influential in that strong Europe. Why? Because on key issues for the United States, and I'll, I'll name some of them, relations with Putin, support for Ukraine, support for Belarusian, Belarus democracy, um, a strong NATO, strong European defense capabilities. Poland and the U.S. tend to be on the same side. And by the way, Poland is very different than Hungary uh, with respect to relations with Russia. So we want a strong Europe and a strong Polish voice in that Europe. That, that's an American interest. And so it, we don't like to see Poland squabbling with Europe, among other things, because a united Europe, the fall of the Iron Curtain was something that Poland, to a significant degree, made possible. They, more than any other country in Central and Eastern Europe, they were the ones who led the taking down of Soviet-dominated Europe through solidarity. And th then they helped, they argued the case for a united Europe, meaning at, ally, allied with the U.S. So NATO enlargement and EU enlargement were the instruments of this larger vision, which America shared. Not only did we share it, it was originally our idea. If you go back to Wilson and his 14 points or Roosevelt and the Atlantic Charter, and the Polish message to us was, hey, remember? Remember what you fought World War II for? It wasn't a divided Europe. It was a united Europe. And that, that shared success means that the United States really wants Poland to be part of a strong united Europe and part of NATO and a U.S. ally and friend at the same time. What would you like to see, you know, because it's not an issue, it's not that they don't understand that Poland is important, it's not that they don't understand the region or don't understand Europe, and yet um, U.S.-Poland relations are in part because of North Street Tomb kind of not where uh, supporters of the relationship would like it to be. Yep, and that's right. EU relations are also not where supporters of the U.S. Right. relationship would like it to be. So what would you, what uh, what steps do you think the Biden administration should take to sort of get this, get this back on track? Okay, there are a number of difficult U.S.-Polish issues and then kind of sort of scratchy politics. Okay, the difficult issues are Nord Stream 2. Um, that's really now on the U.S. to show that the U.S., and Germany have not abandoned Ukraine and, and Poland and the Baltic states. Like I said, I have some understanding of why the Biden administration didn't try to kill the pipeline with sanctions. Pipeline's a bad idea, okay? Like it is a weapon in Putin's hands. The critics are right. But the Biden administration, I think, was not in a position where it could have killed it with sanctions at an acceptable price. So they chose to, to work with Germany but now it's Biden's administration and Germany's responsibility to show that now that Putin's threatening, you know, threatening Ukraine again and, and playing games with gas for, uh, with Europe, 
that they're going to take their responsibilities seriously to fix this. So that's sort of on us. Another issue was this ill, ill-advised Polish um, legislation directed against the biggest independent television network in Poland, TVN, which is owned by Discovery. And it would have basically car- made it impossible for Discovery to keep um, TVN and possibly weaken TVN. So it was, you know, a questionable move in terms of media independence and an attack on one of the largest U.S. investments in Poland. I mean, just a bad idea. Now, interestingly, the Polish president, President Duda, stepped in and said, this is a lousy law and I'm going to veto it. If it comes to my desk, I'm going to veto it. And the Polish Senate also rejected it. So that law may be dead. It's not quite over, but that, I think the polls may have fixed that one after a lot of pushback. Um, There are some other, you know, scratchy issues in U.S.-Polish relations, but the undercurrent, the scratchy undercurrent has to do with the fact that the polls looked at the Biden administration with a little apprehension because they had been close to Trump. Not all in on Trumpism like Viktor Orban. I mean, the Polish embassy in Washington was capably led and maintained good ties with Democrats. It was, it was, it did a good, the Polish embassy did a great job. Polish ambassador was a credible nonpartisan figure. But still, the polls were anxious that the Biden administration would hold it against them that they'd been close to Trump. And I thought, I think they saw the Biden administration with a kind of anxious suspicion. They didn't pay enough attention to things that Biden did that were outreach to Poland, like invite, accepting an invitation, a Zoom in, a, an invitation to a Zoom meeting of NATO's eastern flank countries that Poland and Romania had organized. So Biden was there. Like, that's a big gesture. That's a, that's a big deal. And he did it, I think, before his meeting with Putin. But the Poles were worried because they didn't have a proper bilateral meeting with Poland, but only a pull aside at NATO, which was arranged late. They had a pull aside. That's good. But they they were worried about that. They didn't feel consulted about adequately about Nord Stream 2. And here they have a point, right? They've got a point. So that's the scratchiness. You asked what should be done. Okay. So we should fix Nord Stream 2. The Poles should make sure that this TVN law is dead and they don't pick a fight with a huge American investor, you know, and seem to go after independent media. Um, Then we ought to up our strategic dialogue where we actually are on the same page. You know, Ukraine, Belarus, the Poles have deep knowledge about those countries. They're really good. I mean, they're they're kind of their think tank community knows these countries, you know, better than anybody else. And even on issues like China and supply chain diversification, the Poles are a good natural ally of the U.S. because, you know, I'll whisper this, right? Supply chain diversification is going to work to Poland's advantage, right? They'll pick up some of this and they know it. So, like, it's a natural commonality of interests. The U.S. wants, will want Poland to patch things up with Germany, and we got to fix it with Nord Stream 2. But once we do, okay, they, they need to patch things up with Germany and not pick so many fights with Brussels. You know, what I've said to the Poles is, we have a Putin problem. Why are you picking fights with Berlin and Brussels and being scratchy with Washington when we have a Putin problem? And I, look, I know there are reasons, and I've cited them, right? Nord Stream 2 and the U.S. not, you know, they, they, we should invite the, the Polish foreign minister to Washington. And since, as you, I've said a couple of times, I think President Duda has played a constructive role. I think Biden ought to reach out to him. It would be in the American interest to build up this relationship with Poland. And look, Polish politics is divided like American politics. But I mean, I stay in good touch with the liberal opposition. These are pro-American, pro-NATO people. And 
you know, they, if you get them in a room quietly, they actually think U.S. Polish military relations should continue. They are basically supportive of, you know, the current Polish government's policy toward the East because it's like theirs. You know, some differences in nuance, but it's pretty solid. <clears throat> Let me give you an example of what I mean. So Viktor Orban has picked fights with Ukraine because of issues of the Hungarian minority in far Western Ukraine. The Polish president speaking, you know, the Poles support Ukraine and they have put their bilateral Polish minority issues, you know, on a parallel track. They don't let it interfere. And then with respect to Belarus, not only is Poland like Lithuania giving shelter and refuge to the Belarusian democratic dissidents, but the Polish president addressed President Duda addressed Belarus and he, and, he, and he started speaking Belarusian, the Belarus language. That's a real good gesture. And the Polish foreign minister has been working with the Ukrainian and Lithuanian foreign ministers, recalling their common history in a common state, the old Commonwealth, and saying, you know, we had a demo, we had constitutional traditions. We were part of Europe. And Belarus, we look forward to the day when you can be too. Now that's a lot of that's a lot of good. Now I'm emphasizing the positive here. You know, there's that's because it gets overlooked in all the scratchiness about Polish politics and some of the less wise things they're doing. But you asked what we should do. We should build on what's good. I would just say there, thank you so much again for, uh, for joining me for this interview. Thank you for the opportunity.